All right, I'm not sure for alive. I'm gonna double check. Well, it says we're live in one. Oh, why is it the counter going up? That doesn't make any sense. No, live. That's that's how long we've been live. I'm just checking on mine. Oh, so make sure that we're actually live. Uh, yes, nope. we are. Okay, we are. Oh, shit. Uh, hello, <laughs> hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the L3R3 podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Matt Likes Games. With me is it's me, Tuan, and Hard Days Mike. Uh, hello. how are you guys doing? Hello, while I get things sorted out, uh, let them know how you're doing, what you're up to, and everything. No, I'm doing uh, okay. Do Mike, you want to go first? Oh, no, I guess I'll go first. Uh, Yeah, you go first. first. (laughs) What have you been up to? What have you been up to? It's been a while, man. How long has it been? been, It's been like two Uh, weeks now. Two, three weeks. (laughs) For all all I know, it has been two months for all I know. Yeah, I know. Seriously. Oh, my God. uh, Yeah, I mean, I feel we all thought Monday would be a better day because I'm I'm, I'm getting pretty busy on Sundays for some reason. So Mondays, it feels like a day that we're all kind of free. So I feel like it was a better choice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've just kind of been f- still finishing up Persona 3 Reload. I'm almost done it because I still I still need to start Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. I just have like five hours in that game. But like, it's just so hard to ju- juggle all these games, especially these big games. And there's oh, a yeah. just came out, you know, going over like a strategy RPG. It's actually really good. And I started playing that, so now that's another game I'm juggling. So I'm, now I'm kind of like, fuck, you know, I'm like, screw all this. I'm just going to play Persona 3, finish that, because I'm almost done it. Just start yeah. knocking off the list and continue on. So, yeah, I mean, I'm almost done. So that's pretty much Busy the only game I'm playing. But, uh, yeah, for some, I guess the, the other night I got drunk, and for some reason I bought a PlayStation Portal, and that thing. Wait, did you wait? Did you buy it when you were drunk? No, I'm just joking. I'm about to say that'd be <laughs> might hysterical. As well have been, <laughs> might That's as well hysterical. Drunk when I bought it, I mean, I was I was on something when I bought that thing, but uh, yeah, so yeah, I bought that thing, and then when it works, it works well. I mean, I was even surprised because I the first thing How I often tried does on, it work. Uh, I mean, like, like, there's some nights where it doesn't work at all, and there's some nights where it's like, okay. What do you mean by it doesn't work? Like, what's stopping it from working? But like, I'm, you know, I'm using it, and you know, you know, you know, like the quirks that happen when you're streaming a game, where it's like that is, you know, you're like the audio is like kind of scratch, all scratchy, and then that sounds like it's it's your internet connection. (laughs) Yeah, 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 it's my internet connection. That's that's really what it is. We all know my internet's not good. I mean, I think that's not a secret at this point. So it's not. Yeah. So then, obviously, my PS5 is hooked up through Wi-Fi. The portal's hooked up through Wi-Fi. It's the it's a recipe for disaster. You know, and my internet's mid to begin with, so it's just yeah, it wasn't it's not a good mix. But uh, like I said, I was surprised though the times that it does work were like I you know I actually booted up COD Zombies and I was actually able to get to round twenty on it. Like it was actually like the latency is actually not that bad once you're all hooked up, like and everything's you know working and everything and uh even well, i was even trying that it's not that bad <laughs> <laughs> that's good to hear go. and uh yeah i was even playing the astros playroom and it's cool that it, ha- that it has all the uh ps5's gimmicks like the adaptive triggers and it even has like motion control so you can like you know it's got like the gyros and everything so it's cool that it includes all that you know in a cloud device so it's cool. It's neat. Yeah. Like if I want to just lay down on my bed, you know, or you know, just play a game for like twenty minutes. Not don't don't feel like turning on my TV. It's just nice to have the option because at the end of the day, it's like, it's like a Wii U gamepad. That's essentially what it is for the PS Five. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Speaking of zombies, though, me and my brother, we've been playing a lot of Black Ops One, Black Ops Two zombies recently. We've almost been doing it every night. We just like turn it on. We just play some like Ascension. Like Ascension is such a great map. I think it's probably one of the best zombies maps ever made. Ascension. And that and Doris. Oh yeah. Doris is Doris is also. Oh a yeah. Doris well. is. Uh, you can't go wrong. I very much one. remember on uh, World at War the. Yeah, it was like the final World at War map, but yeah. it's also if you get the DLC in um, Black Ops Black One, Ops. it's also yeah. it also includes it as well. I, I very least. much remember the getting home from school. And yeah. lo- logging on to my 360, <laughs> logging on, turning it on, automatically yeah, yeah. logging on, and just waiting for yeah. my buddies to get on to try and get to the highest round. Yeah, I think man. the highest we ever got was like somewhere in the 30s or 40s. Because yeah, there's a point, 30, yeah. you, you know that part, you remember in the uh, Doris where you're like, it's by the, um, 
the teleporter in the back part of the map, not the one in the front part of the map, the very, very back. And there's like that catwalk. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, That's like the we camping be, spot. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. It, you were good. If one person at least had the MG 42 and you could pack it <laughs> yeah. and had speed cola, That's like, it. because the MG 42. Yeah. Take turns many, reloading, yeah. you know? Yeah. Take turns reloading. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Man, that was, that was a, and then, and, and then if you're really map. lucky, you'll have the box behind you. If you're really lucky. If you're really lucky. (laughs) Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was such a good map. That map and Ascension. I love Ascension as well. You can't go wrong with that map either. But uh, yeah, that's what we've pretty much been doing. So I guess I'm moving back on to you, Mike. So Um, also, hello, Stanley. Thank Stanley you for Francois, by. I appreciate you for stopping by. Bear with oh, us oh. if the stream quality is bad. This is my first. Also, time uh, how's the hard. how's the Skyrim footage? Is that it look doesn't? It's look not good. looking too hot. It doesn't. It doesn't look good. I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> it's gonna be what it is. I'm gonna see. The what Sky, I can do for Skyrim the next for the Game Boy yeah. Advance. But like, I I'm not gonna turn it off right now because if I turn it off, then then it's just you're looking at nothing. So you're looking at nothing. Yeah, I'd rather look at something than nothing. Yeah, we're um, let it go for right now. That's funny. Uh, bless, I guess. So, uh, what I've been up to? Um, God, what the hell have I been up to? Um, well, I go on to say a massive thank you to Matt because uh, for today he gifted me a copy of Dragon's Dogma Two. I'm very wow. excited. Well, that's such this, a generous donation. Seriously, it is. Um, because right now money is a bit tight <laughs> with you know things going on with my cat. So I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, thank you, Matt. Wow. Um. Outside of that, I've kind of just been re- relying on my comfort game. <laughs> I've been playing a you lot of Doom Eternal. Is, yeah. um, uh, I've, I've recently started playing a little bit more of um, uh, Azonzo, or World. It's part of the World War One game series. Azonzo. It's a one a, a, the, on the Italian front World War One multiplayer game. It's really fun, and I enjoy it quite, quite, quite a lot. Um, but. Yeah, outside of that, I'm really trying to think of what I've been playing, and I can't think of anything. Um, I've been playing a lot of original Battlefronts, you know, Battlefront mm-hmm. 1 and 2. I have, I've been modding the crap out of those games. You getting ready for the collection order that's coming up? I, I need to know what it's exactly adding to the table before I could even consider picking it up, because that's like cool. I don't really... There's not many, like... There's a lot of cool like things are adding to it, but it's stuff like I've already had modded in since yeah. like 2007, really. Mm-hmm. So it's like I kind of need to know do they have quality of life features like FOV slider, you know, stuff kind of like that, you know, mm-hmm. does it accept mods, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm just kind of I'm kind of wait to see how that all turns out, um, which hopefully it turns out well, but. Outside of that, Matt, what about you? What have you been up to? Oh, wait, I want to say one last thing. Uh, some, I also had it from a family member. Um, they gifted me a, as an early, uh, I almost said Christmas, Jesus, birthday <laughs> present. Oh, that's a really um, early Christmas. Yeah, that's a really early. <laughs> some Noctua yeah. fans from my, yeah. for my uh, yeah. CPU radiator cooler thingy-majiggy. And they're known for being really, really, really quiet. And I got like the pre, the most premium version of it. I mean, they're like 30 bucks a fan, uh-huh. which, you know, usually you can get fans for like five bucks, I feel like. So, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, so I'm excited for that because my basic radiator fans are pretty goddamn loud. Um, oh, my God, it's Vort. I'm horrified, what's, but also happy to see What's going on, Vort? Vort. Um, yeah, but I'm really excited for that as an early birthday gift. And and thank you again, Matt, for Dragon's Dogma, too. I'm very excited to play it. Oh, man, no problem at all. I'm also excited to play it because that game is going to be fucking awesome. I'm assuming going on um, PC. Yes. <laughs> can't do it. Can't um, handle the 30 frames. I'm um, well, They said it has an uncapped frame. I'm just not, I'm not dealing with it. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to deal with it. They said it's uncapped and that's great and everything. So it's I'm like 20 to 30 it. FPS instead of just the block 30. Then so yeah. Digital Foundry said they found out it's like 25 in certain points nice. in combat. Yeah, that's not I'm, good. Like, I'm not not dealing with that. No. I have no desire to, to to play that. That's like um, PS3 level shit. You know, it's like it's pretty. <laughs> it's pre- it comes full circle because apparently, uh, 
the first Dragon's Dogma on PS3 and it ran like dog ran shit. Horribly. <laughs> I had it on PS3, and that was my first that that was my first experience with the game. And as someone that didn't understand frame rate as a child, I thought that game was literally broken. <laughs> like when I first played it, that was back um, when you refer to frame drops as lag. I was like, oh, this yeah, as lagging. lag, exactly. <laughs> yeah. As lag, yeah. when the game is broken, was like my two. Yeah. And then I found mm -hmm. out frame rates a thing. Yeah. But I'm sorry, Matt. Go, go on. <laughs> You're all right. Uh, for, what's up? Appreciate you for stopping by. Mm -hmm. um, see what I've been playing. Uh, Skyrim. I mean, yeah. nice. I, I've been playing a lot of Skyrim with the anniversary upgrades. So it's there's new weapons and stuff. There's new quests. I, I mean, there's new areas. So it's almost like playing an entirely new game which i'm totally i'm thrilled with uh skyrim being one of my well not one of my my favorite game of all time period mm -hmm. uh so been playing that a lot i grabbed lords of the fallen um i i am enjoying that but i need to figure out how to beat that boss um i might have to do a new character we'll, we'll see how that goes um but that game's really cool uh what else i played a little bit of evil west today with uh ham that game is it's it's, it's 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 a game it's it, like it's, <laughs> yeah, fun. it's the, com the combat's the combat's fun the combat's very yeah. fun it's just it you can tell there was some budget constraints yeah. with that game um which i'm not too mad well, I guess I should say I bought that game day one on PC and I never really played it. Mm -hmm. um, but we're playing it on PlayStation because it was in PS Plus and mm -hmm. we both have it. So, was it's it just standard that PS game. Plus? What's that? Is it just standard PS Plus that's on? Yeah, it was It was one of the games of the month a few months ago or something like that. My, my, my I owned the game for a solid hour on Steam and I was like, no. <laughs> I never fun it. Yeah. I uh, that was essentially how that went. Like and I usually like those type of budget restraint kind of games. I usually am really drawn to them because I usually squeeze out the fun uh yeah. cuz I, you know, have to. But for some reason like I don't know. I couldn't personally find it in that one. That game, I, that game doesn't give you a lot of freedom of movement. Like it feels yeah. It feels very it. much on, yeah, it feels very much on rails, mm -hmm. uh, which is weird for a game that, where the point is like the combat is supposed to be very free flowing. It feels very on Restrictive. rails. Restrictive, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of anything else I've been playing. I really can't. Uh, I mean, I guess Rocksmith, but nobody cares about that. <laughs> um, I but do yeah. Not that's that's what i've been that's what i've been playing uh we can actually get into topics this week i mean first off uh we should probably talk about ghost of Tsushima. yeah uh announced officially um about time. this was on the sixth they announced it i believe uh for pc yeah six yeah. um i'm gonna I'll get may. the date for you guys uh, here i think it's may 16 but that's just a wild guess on my own. i think you're right i think you might i think you might be right yeah. um, and while i'm getting this date actually i'm gonna check out one of the features in Streamyard. we'll see how this goes and i got say oh yeah oh you have been playing that stalker uh trilogy that came mm, out too, right? thank you i'm glad you said that yeah, yeah. stalker oh, that game yeah that game kicks ass by the way <laughs> And it's and it kicks my ass too. I'm playing it on I'm playing it on normal. That game is not the kind of game that you can just you can just walk into a situation and think you own it because you don't. Yeah. You don't, and it and it will it will let you know that you don't pretty quick. Like that's one of those games like you get shot once or twice, you're bleeding, and if you don't patch it up, then you're dead. I oh, love that um, shit. So oh, yeah. it's it's a pretty hardcore game, and I'm I'm really enjoying it. And actually, actually, I need to get back to it. Um, but yeah, I've been playing Stalker. What's the one? What's it called? Uh, Clear Sky. Mm -hmm. um, because Shadow of Chernobyl is the first Stalker game, but Clear Sky is a prelude to that. So mm -hmm. I'm playing Clear Sky, then Shadow of Chernobyl. That's no, so playing like an order, like yeah, uh, then called a Pripyat. Yeah. 
prepared, prepared poppy seeds. I yeah. really hope they get the controllers for it on the PC. I mean, I could buy it on console too, but the only reason why I'm like hesitant is you can get the entire like collection for like three bucks, like yeah. always on like sure. PC because how old it is. It's because um, Mike's a PC cuck. Matt, that's I'm not spending says, that's 40 what, bucks. I can get it for five yeah, bucks. He, he officially, yeah, he's officially he's gone. PC he officially cuck left console. Will not oh, yeah. support Matt, the you would literally got Dragon Dogma on PC. Not. And I got the deluxe edition, Mike, for 80 Fucking bucks because I'm supporting the developers. All right, change, Mike. The, change the topic. That's what I All do. Right. That's what you do. You're right. <laughs> I'm built different, Mike. <laughs> All right, go on. Yeah, but All I'm right. really, I'm, I'm happy to hear that game is like. I saw someone say, "I bet that game doesn't work with the control." I'm like, dude, like literally any game <laughs> works. Maybe great. outside of strategy games, like I could depends, yeah. but like any game can, man, if you fucking try. <laughs> like it um, works really well with controllers, surprisingly so. And I feel like a lot of that's to do with the fact that they just simply added a weapon wheel and. Yep. It, and it and it completely completely alleviates a lot of things. Okay, but right. yeah, back to Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, that being the latest PlayStation exclusive to hit PC. Um, mm -hmm. Now this comes. You were right. Too. Took you were. Time. They did take their time with it. You were right. It does arrive May sixteenth. I look mean, at my, look at my fucking photographic memory. Um, Vort something. says I'm homeless because I pre-ordered Redfall. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh God! I'm sorry, Vort. I love you, Vort. Well, sorry, at least Vort. you at least you got a great gaming experience for it. At least you got oh, a poor Vort. Tier, at least you got a tier one gaming experience. No, um, that'll that'll keep you warm at night. Uh, but Ghost of Tsushima, I I mean, I already know you're not getting that on PC, Twan. I'm not even gonna ask I got you. On PS5, like, what the <laughs> I'm not getting it on PC because, like, you just I have it on PS5 and I. Like it's a great game, but I don't. Yeah. It's it's not great yeah, it's enough for crazy. me to spend yeah. sixty bucks on it again. I might yeah. be getting it to be uh, honest. I'm actually it's, considering. It's, yeah, I've heard I, nothing but great things about. I'm that curious game. how it runs you on should. Steam Deck, though. I'm curious how it runs on Steam um, Deck. Well, I mean, uh, we'll find out. Um, PlayStation yeah, is usually very nice about that. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Is though. like the more people can play their games, the better for them. Um, yeah, they're usually very cautious. Well, not cautious, but uh, they focus a lot on Steam Deck. PlayStation does. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, what was I saying? God damn it! Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm thinking of You're picking it up. It. You might because this looks like it looks like a cool game. I mean, everyone I've seen talk about it is like it's great. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so we'll see. What's it's probably launching at sixty bucks, I imagine. Um, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. 60 I'm months. happy at least it's 60 and not like 70. Yeah. Like, because if they tried that shit again, like they did with The Last of Us, I would have been upset. I mean, Ghost, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima wasn't even like $70 at launch. At launch. Yeah. <laughs> it only became 70 when they slapped the PS5 logo on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, which is insane. But yeah, 60 bucks. The PC version will support upscaling and frame generation technologies like NVIDIA DLSS3, AMD FSR3, and Intel XCSS alongside NVIDIA Reflex and image quality enhancing NVIDIA DLLA, DLAA. Excuse me. Uh, no system requirements were shared yet. Uh, Vincent Vega with a great suggestion. Uh, if you do get this game, try the um, Noir mode. Noir because mode. Because there's like a black and white, like it's black and white, um, it looks like old, like fucking, like like old uh, samurai like cinema. It's really that's cool, really cool. Um, I'll look into that then. It's yeah, it's awesome. Um, and you can play it. You can play it in English. You can play it in uh, Japanese. Like it's oh, it's called Kurosawa mode. Is what it's called. Right there. What's that trailer. music I'm hearing in the background? That please is. Playing, please playing the trailer for it. I'm oh, playing the trailer. Yeah. I'm playing the trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Trying to do it quietly so it's not overbearing. Yeah. But yeah. Um. I mean, I'm sure a ton of people will pick this up. I, I'm not gonna buy it again. But you know, mm -hmm. hey, it, it, it's an awesome game. I highly recommend it. If you haven't played it, you've been waiting for it to come to PC. Well, play there it. you go, man. Play there it because chance. it's amazing. Um, and this this might lead up to a Ghost of Tsushima too, from what I've heard. So, 
looks like that might happen as well. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima. Cool. Tsushima. God damn, I can't see it. Ghost of Tsushima 2 is <laughs> I know. happening 100%. There's yeah, no so I think it's that. locked in at this point. I mean, if if we find out that that's not what Sucker Punch has been working on, I'm going to be shocked. I mean, what else would they work on? They fucking I, they just literally, also, literally they infamous. Like, Last of Us 3. It's fucking yeah. Sly Cooper or some shit. <laughs> like, imagine. Like, Oh, yeah, it would be Sly Cooper or Infamous, and they're not doing yeah. Infamous because they're they're just they have already got a superhero yeah. game, and they're then they're definitely not doing Sly Cooper anymore. I mean, let's be honest. No, that's done. <laughs> yeah. They're done making fun games. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but up next, Xbox's Sea of Thieves was top PlayStation Five digital pre order charts. Um, I completely hysterical. forgot. I completely forgot about this until you guys brought it up again before yeah. the show. That is like Mike just said. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Vort says I would get Ghost of Shima if I wasn't home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Vort to sell uh, your laptop. Yeah. Don't don't say, got how, how else could he? How else could he play Redfall? He needs. To That's play a good Redfall. point. That's it. Yeah, he has to play Redfall. That game is that game is vital to his survival. You need to right set up now. a GoFundMe for Vort Vortigon scamming alliance. All right, sorry. Go on, Matt. I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna set up a GoFundMe for Vort to get the bite back upgrade for Red the Ford. bite back upgrade. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this game is beating out, which I said was crazy in the party chat. Like, Rise of Ronin. It's, it's well, yeah, Rise of Ronin, which I can kind of see because you, just the hype of like, oh, an Xbox game for some people, not yeah. for everybody. But just like the hype of an Xbox game coming to PlayStation, it has a big community already on Xbox and yeah. PC. I can see that beating out Rise of the Ronin. But I'm surprised it's beating out like Dragon's Dogma 2. Mm-hmm. That's kind of shocking to me. I think it's uh, even beating out the DLC for Elden Ring, I think, or something like that. Which is, which is again, <laughs> shocking to me. <laughs> uh, completely shocking. But apparently people are very... Very excited for Sea of Thieves. Isn't like Sea of Thieves like pretty crazy successful? It is. It's very successful. I'm pretty sure it's like it Rare's most successful game they've ever made. It is. Even when they're worth Nintendo it is. as well. Like, I mean, that's that's the reason we keep getting yeah. Sea of Thieves, th- Sea of Thieves stuff, and we're not seeing anything about Everwild. Yeah. I mean, yeah. God knows where that game is. They're not worried about it. I don't think. Um, Doesn't exist. Oh. I'm, uh, Vince of Vegas says Microsoft has an anniversary sale on refurbished consoles, so you got a Series X for three hundred dollars. That's a great well, price that's for a Series deal. X. Congratulations Euro on that. Pound. I can't actually see that a moment. Oh, that's there's true. That's stupid, true. Uh, there's Euro. a stupid. There's a stupid like heart emoji like over every message that pops up for me on the mobile app, and it's pissing me off. I can't. Oh see yeah, it. I can't. I can't read chat through the. Mo- it stinks. It's really it bad. Stinks. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's not dollars. It's Euro. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Vort says skull and balls. Yes, no. skull and balls. That, that should. Oh, be I completely sh- forgot. I completely forgot about that game. Honestly, don't feel <laughs> bad because everybody did. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody forgot. Did. I'm pretty sure Ubisoft forgot about that game. Quite and it's, it's such it's such unfortunate timing on Ubisoft's end that like literally the moment they finally release that game after like seven years. Fucking Sea of Thieves comes on PlayStation. <laughs> it's just it's just funny yeah. how that works out. It's it's know? it's so wild to. to <laughs> think about that because it's like of all things that could have happened when you released that game i bet you money they never would have thought xbox would be releasing sea of thieves on play yeah that's like yeah it's something they never counted on i'm pretty sure they were probably banking on releasing this and then being sea of thieves on playstation and then they're like oh shit sea of thieves is coming to playstation what the fuck (laughs) yeah like we could not pick a better time to release this you know that's uh tragic for Ubisoft. Yeah, it's like it's funny because it's been in development for so long. This game could came out like five years ago, three years ago, you Dude, know. It was supposed to come out like towards the when beginning was, of the like, generation. School, like when I was in high school, you know. Like like it's been a thing forever. I, I want to know what's going on over at Ubisoft because there's like what's happening with Beyond Good and Evil too. I think it's I think it just entered early development or something like that. That's not shouldn't it. have. We saw an entire <laughs> Oh, like like two entire trailers for it. how's it just entering early development <laughs> yeah yeah and the, and um, we saw trailers like three years ago at this point yeah and i saw the first i saw that first show when i was like i said back in like grade 10 in high school what was the last yeah. time i saw that i, saw. I mean it's been a it's been a while since that mm-hmm. first trailer 
Skull and Bones is so bad, though. Even Black Flag sold better, says Vincent Vega. Yeah, I mean, if you ask me which... I haven't, I haven't played Skull and Bones. I'm only going off of what I've seen shared online. Or the four uh, minutes that Phil Spencer played or something. Like yeah, right. Minutes. Yeah, no, literally, uh, it said he only played two minutes. <laughs> he's like, it did. It did. He saw a tell screen. Uh, he was like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, he, he just saw the main menu and was like, no, I'm all set. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god but yeah ubisoft is is oh he says uh ubisoft is smoking some of that molyneux yeah peter molyneux is an interesting guy he's a really interesting dude uh but yeah i mean sea of thieves i'm not gonna are you getting it on playstation Twan? sea of thieves yeah are you getting it? Uh, on I, maybe one day i'll get it. i'm not not right now though i, I was only asking because Twan's like the only playstation main here yeah i mean i'll, I'll probably get like high fire rush i'm definitely gonna get high fire rush on ps5 i might buy that like three more times because i'm gonna probably gonna, i'm probably gonna buy it digitally on ps5 and then i'm gonna get that limited run like cop physical version of it i'll probably get it on playstation and xbox so do you have it on thing. steam yeah i also do i do have it on steam as well i was yeah. about to say you should get yeah. it just for your steam deck yeah i do have it on steam as well so uh yeah yeah but I'm all set with Sea of Thieves. I'll play it on Xbox or P. Actually, yeah. I'd probably try that on PC now. I haven't really done that. Uh, but yeah, I'm really I'm, lots of people are get, excited. I'm what? really curious if Sea of Thieves is going to get a physical copy on PS5 because that would that probably make me. Uh, I don't more likely to buy it on PS5. Think it is. It might. I know there's there's technically physical copies of it on Xbox. Yeah, there is. Oh, that. I, oh, I, I guess. Copy. I guess it. Yeah. Probably hey, what game are we talking about getting a physical of release? Of uh, of I mean, I could maybe, but that game is so like it's online so oriented. Point. Yeah, so that like I don't not blame them for for not like I could Make easily spend not getting a physical. Yeah, release. plus it's like it's kind of like you know it's kind of like on a budget. It's like forty dollars too, right? Yeah, so. yeah. It's kind of weird. I forget that game's still actually a paid for game and isn't free to play just because of like I'm so used to Game Pass. Yeah, the game like, is just, yeah, like kind of given to you. It is pretty yeah. nice when you when you like, but that's not free to play. But I mean, hey, they're gonna make they're gonna make a lot of money. It seems like over there, so good for them. Uh, I love Sea of Thieves. I wish you go back to playing that. I miss that game. I'd be down to play that. I need to download it again, but I would absolutely be down to play that again. Uh, let me stop this screen here. I'm doing all this on the fly, guys. So bear with me, and I'm gonna bring up. The next article, which is Sean Layden's comments on exclusivity. Mm -hmm. uh, so Xbox, X PlayStation boss, Sean Layden says exclusivity is your Achilles heel if a game cost exceeds $200 million. I mean, I I think that's pretty straightforward, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I would agree, but I'll, I'll let you guys go if you have anything to say about it before... Um, uh, I read a little bit more, or if you want me to read a little bit more, it's I don't really care. No. Uh, would you mind like um like was that main the main point of what he said? Because I've always I knew the gist of what he said, but I don't know if he said anything with a little bit more nuance or um. Uh, um okay, so speaking in an interview with Venture Beat, former president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment America, Sean Layden said, "When a video game's cost exceeds two hundred million exclusivity is your Achilles heel. It reduces your addressable market, Layden continued, before citing the success of Arrowhead's Helldivers 2. So basically, like he, he says, re releasing your game only, I mean, a good example, I'm, I think the big thing he's hinting at is Spider-Man 2. Mm -hmm. um, releasing that only on one thing, but then the game costing like 300 yeah, plus yeah. million dollars to, to make happen. Uh, that's that. That's not that's not good. And then he cites mm -hmm. Helldivers too as like they released it simultaneously, PlayStation and PC. And not only is it doing, it's it's like viral. It's been viral since mm -hmm. yeah. it released, and it hasn't really stopped. Sixty forty viral. sales wise too, a little over sixty percent on PC and forty on PlayStation. Yeah. yeah, man, more people buying on PC looks like. And that's and. I mean, again, I, I have to agree with Sean Layden in that I just don't see why you would... Uh, because the great thing about releasing it day and date both places is the fact that 
you, you, you don't have to pay again for marketing. You don't have to go through another mm -hmm. marketing cycle of releasing it on PC just for people to be like, yeah, I don't care about it. It's old. Yeah. yeah. So like if you give them the thing day one and you have all the hype surrounding it from the marketing cycle, you're going to get a lot of people buying your game. And I feel like, I mean, I'm not a genius, but most publishers want a lot of people buying their game. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pass it off to you guys. Any thoughts on Sean Layden's comments about uh, exclusivity and how it's an Achilles heel? Well, for starters, Sean Layden was easily like the best PlayStation boss. Like, I, would oh, I would agree. I, I love that guy so much. He's great. And yeah, it's just it's just so crazy how we even got to this point that games are costing that much to begin with. You know, it is. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's kind of like stupid. It's like it dumb. just it just makes me wonder. It's like when you have when you have a console like the PS6 and it's like okay to fully take advantage of that console, like the cost to even make a game that takes advantage fully advantage of a console like the PS6, would it even be worth it at that point? Which we're, we're gonna cost like six six hundred million dollars to make a fucking game at this you know you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's it's which I, is why oh, frame sorry, rate should be the focus. I'm sorry. Yeah, Keep going, Mike. Well, uh, oh, you want to keep going? Go, or... I'll, I'll let you go for now because I think you uh, want to say something. Oh no, I was just gonna say it's like I feel like gate making a game in general now is such a massive risk. I mean, it's always been a risk, yeah. but I feel like everyone has like a certain quality level they're trying to hit, and regardless, mm -hmm. that's such a massive investment. And I think it's kind of like regardless of how much the game. I mean, I mean, I don't want to say regardless completely, but I'm. I feel like in general, exclusivity is like just. I don't know. I I don't know. Once again, um, um, the the ins and out of the financial part of making games. I'm not going to pretend sure. I understand that. Yada yada, all that bull crap. Just as a, just to get that out there. But I feel like you know with how it is a risk to put something out there now, especially if it's new. Hell, putting anything out there is really, is really a risk in general. And uh, I mean, yeah, I, I do agree with him. And I honestly kind of think pushing it a little further that it needs games need to be released on more than just the platform itself. Nintendo doesn't have to, because like we were saying last time they released literal fucking cardboard and people bought it in the millions. Um, yeah. So it's like, but it's with PlayStation and like Xbox, like I don't think they can just be like, yeah, we can't, you know, release this in multiple places. You know, we got we got to only push for the console. But um, 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 but you know, it mm -hmm. is it really is what it is. I mean, I think it's going to go that way eventually. PlayStation is going to start releasing their stuff day and date on PC. It's just there's just it's just leaving money at the table, really. Yeah. Uh, Especially yeah. if a game's gonna eventually cost like four hundred million dollars to make. I mean, you you almost well, you almost have to at that point. Well, yeah, Vincent Vega in the chat brings up a really good, great point. Um, people talking about Rockstar having upwards of one billion dollars of cost on the new GTA, and he says a few titles will be made this expensive before the industry just folds. Yeah, yeah, and and it's that's like how expensive we're going to get, you know? Exactly, yeah, exactly, and and that's why. That's why you look at something like GTA 6 and it's like, that's why that, I mean, I give them shit. I know a lot of people gave them shit and Can are I just still giving them shit. Too? Oh, wait, you finished yeah. and I got to say it because it's crazy. I just, well, to say a billion dollars is going into that game and it's still not getting a PC day and day for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like that. Yeah. Sorry, Matt, you continue. No, you're, that's, that's, a, that's a fair point. And it's also, I like I said, I was I give them shit. Everybody gives them shit, and people still do, and rightfully so. Of like, you know, why is it taking so long between GTA five and six? And I feel like because people's expectations are just people have literally billion dollar expectations, mm -hmm. yeah. which is like you go back to like the PS2 and the um, original Xbox when they released so there as well. Games, you know? Yeah. Like one, one generation <laughs> you, you, you got like, I'm pretty sure like GTA three was what was that? 2001 or 2002. I can't remember. I can't remember one. GTA three. GTA three. I honestly can't remember. Yeah, uh, all, all I know is it was like the next year vice city was out. Yeah, and the year after they, that, they just San Andreas them out. was out. I think they're releasing some on the PSP as well. You know, it's like, and it, yeah, they, 
we're everywhere. Yeah, we're working exactly. on bully eventually too. It's like and they're right also having midnight. They had midnight club on the side. You know, it's just like they had that's, a lot. They're working on a lot of games. They had bully as well. It's just yeah. like a lot that's, more output. That's a very good point. I feel like yeah. if, for, especially in Rockstar's case, uh, because Rockstar, like specifically, we get a new game from Rockstar like once every fucking six years maybe yeah yeah it, and and it seems to alternate between red dead and gta yeah so like i feel like they they need to get back to what you just said quite honestly of having mm-hmm. like if you're gonna make gta 6 cost a billion dollars which Vincent vegas good point in the chat says that they'll recoup that in the first weekend probably mm-hmm. I, I would i would i would imagine so that game is gonna break a ridiculous amount of records mm-hmm. um but if you're going to make that game cost a billion dollars, maybe you should have, and this not just for Rockstar, this goes for everybody, but like maybe you should have Midnight Club as oh, an example. Midnight Club Midnight Club's like, been dead for too long since the 360 days, you know? It's been, yeah, for way too long. It's kind of yeah. nuts that like, because seeing Need for Speed Unbound come back, and I know mm-hmm. people are like shitting on that game, which I never understood. That game's like the yeah, best Need was, for Speed. Yeah, that game was underrated. Yeah, that game's like the best Need for Speed I've played since probably Carbon. Yeah, I, I... and it's like I I loved it, and people mm-hmm. but whatever. But it's like have a game like that. Like I don't know why you wouldn't have a game like that. I don't know why you wouldn't be working on something on the side like Bully. Like Bully Two mm-hmm. would be would be a fucking amazing. I would game. do absolutely anything for a new Bully game. I do mm-hmm. fucking anything. I love Bully. Yeah, like it's. I mean, I, I didn't play it back then, but I have played it um, mm-hmm. more recently, and it's a really, really cool game. So, uh, like, and like, uh, this is just for Rockstar, but like, it applies to Microsoft, Sony. Like, if you're going to be working on, and you will be, because we we can just kind of assume because your whole fucking roadmap got leaked. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like Spider Man Three, for example, why not have I don't know. Put a put a team together to work on something small in the kill zone universe. Test the waters. Mm-hmm. See, see, is this something people want? And if it's something that people want, maybe you go forward and make something a little bit bigger. Or resistance, or maybe um bring back little big planet in some way. There's so many things that you could do. But there's so many things that Sony has. Like yeah. Jack and Baxter have been dead for a long time. Exactly, you know. and it doesn't need a budget of two hundred. Like it's it, yeah. like a two hundred million dollar like, Jack and Daxter game wouldn't make any sense. It, like it, I would, um, you don't know what I'd give to have a new Ape Escape game. Like, oh my god, with the yeah, fucking dual the, sense controller, that'd be amazing. Like, and imagine that costs. I don't know. Again, I'm talking out of my ass here. What fifty <laughs> million dollars? Ninety million max? Yeah. Like, uh, like make a couple of those. Like, yeah. like. Try that and see. Everything see doesn't need to be a blockbuster out. hit, you know. <laughs> that's the thing is that that's apparently the culture right now within PlayStation. I would argue within the gaming industry as a whole that mm-hmm. if you are like north of a like like if you're getting essentially like a full release, especially from a AAA industry, you need to make sure that shit's a blockbuster, at least in the current way they have it set mm-hmm. up. Um, and it really stinks because it's just. It's unnecessary stress on the developers, probably cri- cripples uh, creativity. Like, hell, actually, after this, I'd like to talk about the Time Splitters leak, um, uh, oh, Time God. Splitters next leak, because there's oh a lot of God. things people don't That's realize God. about that gameplay. And I, I want to get into uh, get into Fortnite. that after. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things people don't realize what they were doing, though. Be- I mean, it leaked yeah. out what they were doing, but not everyone saw that article because um, it came out like a few months ago. But yeah, sorry, Matt. I just realized that, and I want to talk about that after. If that's okay with you. Go for it. Should, wait, should I go now? Yeah, go for it. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I just didn't know if you wanted to finish your thought. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. um. So basically, time splitters next, uh, as well as early prototype footage of time splitters four from the PS3 and 360 era got leaked out. Um, but that's beside the point. So time splitters next, which was the the remade um, Free Radical Studios Times new Time mm-hmm. Splitter game was coming out, and the leaked footage essentially looked like a really like a Fortnite clone. Yep. And yep. it looked <laughs> genuinely like crap because, well, it was a oh, fucking yeah. Fortnite clone. However, <laughs> one of the things too I want to just point out is if you look at a lot of the gameplay clips, they were on the maps. 
of um 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 they were they were all on the maps of time splitters too at least from mm-hmm. what i've noticed i only seen that gameplay clip like two three times and i was kind of like scanning just minorly um and what their plan was from the the um the that i wish i should have saved it but it just came to my head right now was that they were kind of tricking the higher ups into getting invested into the time splitters game to then stealthily change it into a time splitters 2 soft remake um they were trying to get all they were like essentially porting over all of like the textures you know they're remaking everything but under the skin of a battle royale game to keep the investors like pleased with what they were doing and um so essentially that's why it looked like that because the plan was was to tell them no we're just gonna do this but look don't worry we got everything made because we can just use all that for this and obviously that didn't fly with um what embracer group so that's just something i, I did want to say because everyone's like oh my god this game would have it, let's be real if it launched like that it would have been absolute dog shit let's not you know let's not pretend it wouldn't have been but um, that was something that they were planning to do is they were kind of trying to play trick the higher ups, but I mean, you can only really trick a company that's in it to make tons and tons of money, mm-hmm. you know, and it's still a goddamn shame that they had to literally lie to just work on like a beloved IP. You know what I mean? Um, and that's one of the reasons why I feel like, you know, as, as profitable as the AAA industry is, um, I always say that I feel like, yeah, the AAA industry and like the game industry in itself might be healthy and like a revenue income profit waste way. But I feel like a lot of developers are hurting due to the squeeze of needing to appease the higher ups of hitting a certain number or getting a certain player count or following a certain trend. And I, and I, and that's, you know, more so whenever I say, I feel like the industry is hurting. It's because, you know, uh, I feel like some developers are kind of, um oh my god unreal tournament don't even get me freaking started on that vincent i'll have a breakdown matt knows i'm still mad about that but yeah no, and, and that's get another unreal tournament yeah seriously so that's just one of the things they were doing with time Square. so i saw everyone coming on like this looks like dog shit this looks awful oh my god free radical didn't know what they were doing and i understand it don't get me wrong but it's mm-hmm. really important to like know that their plan was to rebuild all these sort the, these um assets i don't know i kept saying sources assets in the new engine they were using and then slowly but surely shift it into like a soft remake of uh time splitters 2 um and it just didn't it didn't end that way and of course mm-hmm. they got shut down and i'm in and i'm in uh, undeniable pain because i don't have any more time splitters um yeah, no, we always get so close to see another two new time splitters and then shit happens and then shit happens you know, every canceled. single time i feel like I mean, this happened splitters... this is like the fourth or fifth time this has happened like it's like, time oh, we're gonna add time splitters. <laughs> yeah, time splitters rewind. rewind. Is, yeah, it's still in, it's still being made, mind you. Yeah. Um, but uh, and I'm sorry to get a little sidetrack there, Matt. I just kind of really wanted to get that off my chest because I've been seeing so much commentary on it about Twitter about saying how Free Radical had no idea what they're doing, and I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> let me let me white knight form just a little bit. Not that I don't understand why people saw that and like their skin crawled like beyond belief like don't don't worry i understand it but um yeah so do you want to go back to the topic about playstation and multi-platform or uh i mean i think we all kind of agree uh you know sean layton's yeah yeah he's pretty spot on with uh with what he's saying there i mean actually i wanted to bring up something that sean layton said one time this is like a while this is like a this is like a few years ago. It was like during an E3 when E3 was still a thing. But yeah, he, he called out actually Vibribbon. I'm not sure if you guys know about that game on the PS1. It's oh, like a very niche oh, like rhythm yeah. game. And he and he kind of like called it out. And like I know just, you're talking about. it's just it's just one of those, yeah, it's just one of those things where this is the reason why I respect him so much. He, and he says, like, you know, it wasn't a million, you know, it wasn't a million seller, but he says that wasn't the point, right? They just wanted to make something that was just unique. And you know, just to you know, just to widen the variety of games on the platform, right? Yeah. And I think I feel like that's just so important. Just having a game where it doesn't cost that much. It's just a creative thing. Like even like for example, what Xbox does with Pendiment. That's why I have like respect for like 
with Xbox currently, because at least, you know, with like High Fire Rush and like Pendaman, at least, you know, they're trying to have smaller, more creative games. But uh, I mean, hopefully that sh- that continues. We'll see. But, you know, but yeah, that's just the kind of stuff I want to see from PlayStation. But we don't see that anymore. It's just like the big budget stuff. That's like, oh, it has to be a blockbuster or nothing, which I just which really pisses me off, honestly. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, th- I just have to get that off my chest. No, and it, he, that's one thing you said too. It's like they, they need to start focusing yeah. on making some smaller games. Yeah. Um, and he's right on that as well. But that was like uh, that was like PlayStation's identity back in the day, right? With the PS1, yeah. and the PS2. It was just it was like let's throw everything and the kitchen sink, just see what sticks. You know, we'll just see try everything. Sticks. We'll drop platform the racing game. Yeah, yeah. It was, they, they they tried everything, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying. Then the last was became a success, and then they had their form. Yeah, then that's all it. Of time. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I mean, what else is there to say on that? Yeah, I agree. I agree. But uh, you miss you, of, Sean Layden. <laughs> speaking yeah. of Sean Layden, uh, with his comments on exclusivity and you know AAA gaming in general, uh, Deviation Games is Oof. shut down before it can even ship its first game uh, in its partnership with PlayStation. This, uh, I mean, there's really no way to sugarcoat it. It sucks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's incredibly unfortunate. Uh, the fact that they didn't even get to see the thing that they've been working on for, I mean, they they announced this partnership, I want to say, soon after the studio was formed, like back in 2021. And they've yeah. wor- been working ever since. And now you're not even going to get to see that game whatever it was however proud they may be of it uh release in any way shape or form uh and by the way deviation games studio formed by call of duty zombies mode creator jason blundell and trey arc veteran dave anthony so two people who have been in the industry for quite some time and who have done their fair share of very successful things so yeah i mean this sucks i i don't know what else you could really I, I mean i'll pass off to you guys but i mean deviation games was working on a triple a well that's what the thing says a triple a a shooter we don't know if it was an fps i'm assuming it was because it's ex yeah. duty developers yeah yeah, yeah. uh so a triple a shooter uh no longer going to be coming out the studio is shut down and i don't even think we got an official word on this from playstation i think we all found this out because um a website picked it up from LinkedIn. Uh, a bunch of employees were saying that the studio had been shut down, and eventually it was confirmed. But yeah, just uh, just a really shit situation. Um, as anyone else have any anything to say about it? Yeah, it's just I... yeah, it's really a shame we can't even see like what they were working on. I feel like maybe like a few years from now we'll, we'll get leaked or something. We'll see. Be like, oh man, you know what could have been, but. Yeah, what could have been? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's always it's always the cancel games that look the, the greatest most game ever made. That you have to <laughs> you know? play. It's like yeah. that's just me. Like every time I see a cancel game, it's like this game looked like it could have been amazing, but then if it actually came out, it probably would have been dog shit for all I know. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's, we'll, just, we'll just never know. It's just what could have been. This is the weird thing too. Is like I want to say it's kind of besides the point. I'm sorry. Were you trying to finish up a point there, Twan? I just kind of. Oh no, no you, you, could, you could continue. <laughs> I'll, I'll get but, to my ADHD go burr sometimes, yeah. but um is that this i i hate ever commenting on people what they say on twitter but i kind of just want to talk about it for a moment i remember the other day i'm putting down the control i'm not playing doom so i can get a thought out um, <laughs> uh i remember people trying to spin this is why this isn't you know i don't even say bad news for playstation or something because i don't like saying oh it's bad news like this is like it's a fucking scoreboard of good news and bad news <laughs> yeah. for both playstation and um you know xbox and all that because i don't like mm-hmm. doing that because it's stupid i'm 28 um mm-hmm. But, you know, I was seeing like, oh, they got the, some of the talent and now they're working at PlayStation Studios directly. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I get that. That's cool and all. But like they weren't a studio they were directly partnered with wasn't able to get a game off the ground. With, was it 600 employees? Did you, was it, Matt? Uh, 600 employees. Let me see. How many employees um, did Deviation Games have? Man, 600 people without a job now. It's a yeah, shame. it's like I'm, I thought it was 600, but it could be less for all I freaking know. Um. I thought you just read it honestly. Um, no. But uh, okay. Um, whatever. The X amount of employees 
regardless it's a whole studio shutting down mm -hmm. um so i don't know why people are trying to uh, say hey, is this so is this a w or this an l i'm like it's it's not it's, good it's regardless. far from a w that's for sure it's it's no it's not right. a w is it not in that article i swear to god it was 600 where's the 300 I don't, know. I don't know there's so many there's oh wait no i know where i'm getting the 600 from that's from the uh the other topic we'll talk about later um um oh yeah i know what you're talking about um pardon me on the uh confusion of the number there a studio shut down and x amount of there's been so many closures now i can't even keep up about how many people are gone per studio now i can't do that i can't keep uh up. so in 2021 i mean what we can assume there's more now or there was more uh in 2021 it had over 100 employees at the studio over 100 okay whoopsie daisy very sorry about that apologies don't like lying sorry about that guys um but regardless a whole studio shut down that was a part of their live service mm -hmm. plan or was a part of pushing into a new sphere of game that they do currently do not have because i'm pretty sure that was going to be their new answer like everyone was saying that was going to be their answer to call of duty you know call well, i mean it's extra arc devs so i guess it makes yeah extra arc devs right so yeah. it's like mm -hmm. it's not a good thing like this i don't it's it's a very bad thing that i feel like we're seeing a lot of like their live servicey things fall apart right now um like I not feel like it is the only successful one really has been what hell divers. And yeah. that's really a game that's been established and it's an established studio that's been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't just ripped from there. Um, you know, whatever they were doing and told to make hell divers too. So yeah. it's, it's not a good thing right now. And I feel like once again, you know, Sony and a lot of, I and mean, we're seeing it across the industry. There's a crack, a crackdown on what you know is being made and uh, what's going to get out i don't know i just to me the main um the main thing i'm trying to say is i'm sorry i'm like rambling right now mm -hmm. is that You're this right. isn't a good time in the gaming industry i feel like for literally anyone um no especially people trying to make this as a w or l for playstation or sony or xbox or whatever i'm like that's fucking weirdo shit stop doing that that's very weird um, there's no way you could make this a w and it's not about a, and even if it was it's not about a w or an l like people just a, a lot of people just lost their livelihood um yeah. so like uh, whether whether you could spin this into a w or an l for playstation xbox whoever the fuck uh that's kind of a shitty thing to do yeah it's kind of a it's just it's just uh, yeah it's, i don't it's, know it's, it's, it's just i think the biggest shame is we can't even see their their potential right i mean for all we know this could have been another like respawn for all we know but we'll never know been. yeah it's because could've i mean yeah. there's ex cod developers at the end of the day who knows maybe we could have gone like a zombies and it was actually like really good for, you know who knows like no one knows but nobody knows and it sucks we'll we'll, we'll never really uh know yet uh vince of vegas says indies and so-called uh double a is thriving and yeah i totally agree with that indies I, and like i made that video uh i can't remember if it was last week or the week before about like triple a gaming being in a pretty bad state and indies very much uh double a indies whatever you want to call them it's kind of, it's in a position to carry the industry which is a pretty unique position for indie devs. Um, but I think it's, as much as it sucks, I think that's kind of something that needs to happen right now, just to just to help show all these big publishers that like, yo, you can make great games for less than hundreds of millions of dollars, like it's possible. Um, and hopefully that'll, we'll start seeing that trend, you know, sooner than later, but yeah, it seems like it seems like Jap Japanese devs for the most part are in a pretty good spot as long as you're not Square Enix. Oh, dude, yeah. you, I mean the the complete antithesis to this, and I'm glad you brought that up because it just reminded yeah. me, and I'll see if I can find an article on it. But the complete antithesis of this, yeah. did you see uh, Capcom announcing that not only are they not shutting anything down, yeah, employers are getting yeah. raises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, employers are getting raises over at Capcom. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna see if I can. Find yeah, it. Well, yeah, but it seems it. like it seems like you know Nintendo, Sega, and Capcom. It seems like they have it all figured out, you know. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> that's a very good point. Ca okay, yeah. here it is. Let me bring it up on the screen. Uh, 
Capcom announces salary increase for all employees this year. Yeah. Includes 28% boost to starting salaries. So not only are they not shutting things down, yeah. they're doing the exact fucking opposite. <laughs> and and like and here they are about to release what I think. I mean, we'll see. The game needs to release, it needs to be in a good state. Things need to go right and everything. Yeah. But if things go right, you know. I feel like Dragon's Dogma 2, for me, I know a lot of people feel differently and have different mm-hmm. tastes and everything. That's probably going to be my my game of the year this year. Like, I'm more, ex- it's weird because I'm more excited for Avowed, but I just don't think Avowed's going to get, yeah. it doesn't matter how good that game is, I don't think it's going to get game of the year type of shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but I think Dragon's Dogma 2 absolutely will. Mm-hmm. Um and I mean, they're they, they're releasing that. I mean, they've released some. Capcom's been on a roll the past like what five years, six years since remember Resident back, Evil Two remake. Do you, yeah, do you remember back in like the three sixteen PS three era when everyone would call them Crapcom because they were just on such a you know, oh like dude a freak? the downward <laughs> spiral oh, <yeah>. was insane. <laughs> like that was like their worst. That was like their worst time. Like fucking back like in the 316 PS3 era, it was just such a bad because they're trying to appeal to Western markets and they just kind of lost their identity for a good while. Yeah, it's like people in the Western market liked their games because they weren't Western, like typical, like yeah. game, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think I mean, after I think ever since Resident Evil 7 came out, that's when they were really turning things around. Yeah. Yeah. They they like once what that was the game it was it was that yeah that kind of shifted everything for them and ba- basically now they're like they're like an icon in the industry again because they yeah. once were yeah, yeah but they got point. they got they got themselves back on track yeah. yes and that's that's i'm glad you brought that up because i i did completely yeah. forget about that so shout out to capcom for not being a, f- a fucking awful company um, so <laughs> I'm really excited them, again. Honestly. Thank you so much for gifting me that, Matt. I really appreciate that because don't even, don't even you know it's been you know a time. So thank you, Matt. Don't yeah, man. I guess, I guess I guess Western Studios they just got to look at Japanese studios and just see what they're doing, you know, because clearly they're doing something right. Man, I don't even want them to call. I just want people to go back to like making things they really want to make, not like oh yes. we can do this, but like yeah. make it look like this. You know, so it gets popular. Like I just want them to make what yeah. they really want to make. Yeah, just put your heart um, and soul into something. That's it. You know. I also think yeah. it's kind of just part of the culture over there that, like, they they're not they're not as I mean, over here in America and other parts of the world, to be honest. Like, we're very money hungry. We're very money yeah, driven, yeah. and obviously, it's like, oh, the stocks obvi- are going down. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, obviously, Capcom's there to make money. They're a business, yeah, yeah. of course. Same yeah. with Nintendo. Obviously, Nintendo's there to make money. They're a business, but like you look at, I mean, we just talked about Capcom, but Nintendo, like the, their CEOs don't, like their CEOs don't take, don't just give themselves more money. They're not just mm-hmm. giving themselves yeah. more money. Uh-huh. They're not laying off people and giving themselves more money. Mm-hmm. They, and like they, they've talked multiple times about, I forget the quote, um, but it was something to the effect of how can, how can a game developer make a good game knowing that at any moment I could just ruin their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so like it's, it's it seems to be entirely different over here where it's like, game developer needs to make great game because at any moment I could ruin their lives. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, at any yeah, moment it's I not, could yeah, it's just not a good home. Yeah, it's just not yeah, exactly. a good vibe, you know. It it's 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 the exact same problem in both areas, but two entirely different solutions. One mm. good and one very bad. Um so yeah, like I, I mean, hopefully people I mean, I hope people look at Capcom and I mean, it there's feels that weird one to say, there's that one this- time with the Wada, right? When uh, when the Wii U was doing really bad, and what he instead of laying people cut. off, yeah, he took a pay cut. You know, yeah, himself. a lot of the higher ups did. Yeah, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It feels yeah. it feels weird to say like to give Nintendo praise because the way they do everything Suck else, everything kinda. else. <laughs> yeah, the way they do everything <laughs> else kind of sucks. But it's when it comes to that specific thing, that's something that that other people other publishers in the industry need to be looking at 
and saying, okay, we can't exactly do that, but we shouldn't be doing exactly what we're doing right now. We sh- yeah. That shouldn't be the case. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. Hopefully things level out. It's weird because as much as we're, we rag on AAA games and stuff, like we just had last year was probably one of the best years in history for gaming. Mm, only for like everyone to lose their jobs, you know? Y- yeah, only for everybody to be rewarded with, hey, you're fired. Yeah. So it's it's like, and this year looks to be a lot of the same, where it's like mm-hmm. we're on pace for a pretty historic year in gaming, mm-hmm. only for everybody to again be warded with, "Hey, you're fired." Uh, yeah. So I don't I don't know what can be done, but hopefully something, and and hopefully in the meantime, Double A and Indie will hold things down for everybody. Yeah. Speaking but, of uh, Indie, it's so crazy how Toys for Bob became independent. So yeah, that is. Oh, that's something yeah. we should talk about. Because I don't think we're uh, talking so, about that yet. So, Toys for <laughs> Bob completely split uh, yeah. from Microsoft and Activision. Uh, shout, shout out to them. Props to them. Yeah. Um. I. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys are in agreement. This is a 100%. great thing. This is a great thing. Yeah. Man. Uh. I. I mean, it. It gives them. It incurs more risk for them, but it also. Mm-hmm the reward is much higher and you and you're not now relegated to just making trees and call of duty or whatever yeah, shit yeah. You're doing before. the fucking like, so, they're out of the cod mines officially you know exactly <laughs> now now you're you're out of you're out of that that terrible terrible mine where you're <laughs> where you're only making call of duty and you can you can make things you want to make and mm-hmm. hopefully hopefully they're getting to work on that uh, as soon as they possibly can and i think even in their um and their letter or their statement, I guess you would say, they kind of teased Spyro. I think they ended their mm-hmm. letter with saying, um, keep your horns up. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I'd be hey, nice if Microsoft lets them still work on these IPs. Well, they I said they want to be part- think, Yeah, they said they yeah. want a partnership with Microsoft. But with Microsoft. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's the plan. I mean, because. Yeah. It would good be on them. I think that's a good idea because yeah, because they don't want they don't because they can't risk again being just left as the Call of Duty the Call of Duty studio. Like yeah, yeah that's got to be so given, crushing. Like yeah. I couldn't imagine like having to work on the next skin tight suit for Nicki Minaj yeah, or, or the, <laughs> the, the, the AK forty seven models or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. like the next microtransaction skin of some random celebrity's ass. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I, that has to be terrible. Yeah. I can't see that in any other way. It, it's, it's crazy to think about toys for Bob making pretty successful, like rebooting crash mm-hmm. spiral, like give, giving us remakes of crash, like really like widely, like, like received with positivity. Like mm-hmm. widely with positivity for Crash remakes, a new Crash game, Spyro, mm-hmm. and then they they're just like, hey, now you're back on Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. Now, you're, now you're just now you're just back and they're all, and they're all like very well received too. Like you know, yeah, very, very high highly rated, games, very high quality. And 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 they're just back to Call of Duty. Yeah, so yeah. again, good good on them. Hopefully. This means they can make something that they're really excited about making, and hopefully the teases of Spyro are true. I mean, we'll see. I mean, because if I had to pick, honestly, if I had to pick between Spyro and Crash, I'm more of a Spyro kid. Uh, of course, I feel it's been longer since we actually had a new Spyro game. We just got yeah. a Crash yes. not that long yeah. ago. The last yeah. Spyro thing we got was just the three remakes, right? Exactly. So, give me fucking yeah. nitro fueled racing on PC. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised still not that. Yeah. I've been yeah. emulating it on this yeah. I, on one of my one yeah. of my um yeah. not um not uh Bimbembo emulators PC and and I've been using an unlock FPS tool on it and it's been great. Just I want to buy it though. Yeah. Let me Speaking buy of it. emulators, isn't that like isn't that shut down now the Yuzu emulator? Shush, I'm not emulating. I'm a <laughs> Oh, what's what's great? Yeah. Is we didn't get to do our show. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, but um I I had in the, I was really proud of it too. Uh I had in the thumbnail for one of those shows um mm-hmm. where the topic was Nintendo suing Yuzu. Yeah. Um I'd made the Yuzu logo and switched it from Yuzu to Sue You. 
That's <laughs> um, that's and I thought that. I thought that was great. I just wanted to give myself props for that because yeah, I thought, I'm proud really, of you. That's, that's great. That was really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's that's also another. Thing. And again, it's weird how we just gave Nintendo praise, but then, uh, but then Here we Nintendo, go. another thing comes back around just as for us to hate them or, again. Nintendo just God, they stink sometimes. They really and the stuff. thing is, I, I with Yuzu, there is a lot of like, weird gray. There's a lot yeah, of weird there's the Patreon shit, shit, you know. Yeah, Yuzu did That's definitely the issue. did some things yeah. they should not have done. But also yeah. at the same time, though, um, um, uh, I fucking don't really give a shit about Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo's bottom line, <laughs> so I'm like fuck you too. But like, yeah, that's kind of like it's. Uh, and the well, funny yeah. thing is, is, since it's open source, people are now working on those emulators, their version, and hopefully they'll yeah. not do the same shit they did. And to 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 your point there, like it's hard to care about Nintendo when they don't even seem to care enough to to let you legally buy the games you want to play from their mm. from their fucking historic library. You just yeah. there's tons of games you legally can't buy. Mm-hmm. And that's that's insane. Like just look at all crazy. the Pokemon games going for like three hundred bucks on eBay. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, all people want to do is give you money, and you're <laughs> just not doing it. You're not allowing them to. And I don't know why. I don't understand that. It's confusing. shut up, Matt. Consume. Right? I need to get. The yeah, new, nothing I to get the consume, I guess though. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you yeah. when I consume. Give me Metroid Prime Four. Yeah. Uh, Damn it. Been, uh, it's seven years now since we had that logo. I don't even know. It's been too long. It feels <laughs> like most of my life, Eight quite years. honestly. I could. I, uh, I I need to get my Switch emulator. I mean, my Bimbendo <laughs> um, emulator. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that's great, dude. I was in college. I'm almost thirty. I was in college when they announced that. I was in when high they, school. <laughs> I finished they, college like four years ago. <laughs> uh, Wait, how old what are you? Want? Seven. I'm no. I'm 24 now. So. Seven. God, Twan's a child. So I was, uh, I was in high. So it was 2017 when that got announced, and I was in grade 12 in high school when that got announced. Dude, Are people shoving you in lockers. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, god. <laughs> just kidding. I know. No so I still remember when that was announced. I was actually like, we're like in math class, and I had my phone, and we're just like just live streaming the Nintendo Direct. And, and Vincent, I'm like, oh, I was like, yo, what did you play for? <laughs> we're all like, you know, we're getting hyped. No, oh, I can't wait to play this next year. Yo. <laughs> Me and all fast Vincent forward said it. Now, Vincent got it right, too. It. You can buy yeah. a new console to play Metroid Prime 4. And that's that. Here's that thing I'll happily buy a new console to play yeah. Metroid Prime 4. I'm not getting that console any other way. You could, yeah. you could tell me Breath of the Wild runs at fucking 600 FPS. I don't <laughs> care. I want Metroid Prime 4. That's all at I this, want. At this point, I don't even want Metroid Prime 4 on the Switch because I just think it's going to hold it back at this point. You know? Yeah. Well, it's it's going yeah. to... Oh, on the Switch or the next Switch? Yeah, the next, I'd rather it just be on the next Switch. I wouldn't want it to be on the... Oh, I can't imagine yeah. it'll be on... Yeah. I'd be surprised if they released it on the, on the, the current, current Switch. I'd yeah. be surprised. Well, they might be like, oh, we promised it. So the, you know, they might do something like that with, like, with Breath of the Wild because Breath of the Wild... Was originally supposed to be a Wii U game, right? But then they released it on oh, the yeah, Switch. Oh yeah, it was, wasn't it? But they're all like, you know what? Since we promised on the Wii U, we also released on the Wii U, right? Even though no one bought it on there, right? So, <laughs> so they might. Oh, I think they might do a similar thing, thing where they're they're gonna release, you know, Metroid Prime Four on the Switch too. But they'll probably also release it on the regular Switch as well. Just you know, just to make those guys happy that really did buy a Switch for Metroid Prime Four. Like I could see that happening. God, I couldn't imagine buying a Switch for Metroid Prime Four. How yeah. dev- how devastated you must be. Yeah, but like, year yeah, after think, year. That's why I think you know, that's why I think Nintendo might just release it on both consoles. Yeah. I could see that. I see what yeah. you're saying. Runs at 240p. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Runs at 240p at 15 FPS. Mm-hmm. God, that'd be, it's that'd be, be nice. Terrible on the current switch. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully one day we'll see more about it. Uh I'm trying to think if there's oh yeah Activision we should probably talk about Activision. Uh, when they do now oh yeah this is where I got the number mix up. <laughs> yes. Um. So Activision QA workers vote to form largest U.S. video game worker union to date. Uh. Again, this I mean I feel like consistent consensus. This is a great thing. 
Mm -hmm. um for for activision workers and i'll tell you what if anybody needs a union it's probably Activision. oh yeah yeah I think raven stop were like the only studio that's a union or something i think so i think because i remember that being a big deal um yeah. when when that news first hit and this also here this also is a big deal i mean uh hats off to the workers hopefully this leads to you know just just a better working environment yeah just to general. not get fired uh, you know, on the fly <laughs> you know? yeah not yeah. not have to be working under ridiculous amounts of stress every single day um while also being harassed or whatever shit's going on over at activision that's just terrible and garbage um Is but Bobby yeah crotch Bo out of there now yeah bobby's out of there thank god uh and and hopefully that's do that's that's inspiring some form of change over at activision because that guy is a goddamn demon. Yeah, um, he looks like one too. He actually does. He looks like um, looks like, like a little goblin those, man. Yeah. Looks like a little imp, like a little hairy imp from from uh, Doom. Kind of. <laughs> he does actually. Gross. That's fucking funny. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm happy for the workers. I mean, I I don't know what else to say because I mean, this is a great thing. I'll pass off to you guys if you have anything to say. But I'm I'm have, just happy for the. Workers in this case yeah, I mean, yeah I'm, surprised, great. I'm surprised sledgehammer didn't get unionized after like even the whole mw3 fiasco like man it was that was some really tough working conditions especially like after since vanguard came out and uh, then they yeah. said okay you know there's not gonna happen again and then it was even fucking worse when modern warfare 3 was releasing because they're even under more stress it's just seriously it's yeah. they were not having a fun time with those conditions and understandably yeah no not at all uh so good for them Hopefully mike were you gonna say something i just said it's great i mean 600 yeah. that's the biggest uh gaming union in the industry and mm -hmm. apparently microsoft just you know Act active microsoft whatever they didn't have any like rebuttals towards it they just yeah. um, yeah. they just they just called jimmy <laughs> nobody likes <laughs> unions oh my god um that's the guy that wouldn't be missing right um Mm -hmm. but but um yeah it's I, I, that's just great for them because i can't mm -hmm. imagine especially in the industry as a whole right now how stressful it is to work anywhere with anything you could work on one of the biggest games this year and still lose your job yep. like oh yeah it, I, it's just i couldn't imagine the stress i mean i kind of can't because i feel like that's the, the writings on the wall where i work <laughs> but um Sure. But that store's doing terrible. But um but no, I, I can't imagine. They just make so much money, but still like spite like Insomniac games, like mm -hmm. they suffered layoffs, like yeah. even though that game was even though they're know, carrying the they're carrying the PS fives on their They're back literally right they're now. carrying <laughs> not even just put, put the PS but PlayStation as a whole. Yeah. Like yeah. they're really carrying it and they're just like you're losing your job. Like yeah. it sucks. Like it thanks for really... saving us. You're fired. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it stinks. Yeah. It does. It does. I mean, if insomniac's not safe, then, then no, I mean no I feel like safe. that's no one is safe. Yeah, I feel like it's a pretty clear lesson to everybody that nobody's really safe. And and this this being the largest a uh, union and uh gaming the gaming industry right now i mean that's that's great hopefully it's a first step um of of more of this kind of thing to come i i mean that that can only be good for the workers the people who are actually making the games as games, opposed to yeah. the people as opposed to the people who are just up top crunching numbers and everything but mm -hmm. uh yeah, hopefully, hopefully this uh, inspires a bit more change in the industry, and we can use this as some sort of beacon of light in the midst of whatever the hell has been going on the last two and a half years. Yeah. Oh Seriously. But I mean, I th that was the last topic for today. No, was it really? I it was. Uh, well, we can talk about the Fallout show. Oh uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't know. If uh, we can end it on that because that's honestly a good way to end it. A uh, little bit of fun to end the show. Uh, let me full screen this and hit play. Hey. Jesus. No. That was loud. God, that is loud. I'm here to <laughs> I do apologize, but yeah, you you've you've all seen the Fallout trailer at this point, correct? Yeah, I, I thought. I just is that better? 
Yeah, that's funny. Okay, we're all good here. But yeah, the Fallout Four trade or Fallout Four. God damn. Oh, yeah, did uh, it, I heard TV something show. about I heard something about like uh, Todd Howard actually like revealed some stuff about Fallout Five just so it wouldn't be too similar or something like that. I'm not sure. So if yeah, I think the story was um, writers for the show were had some ideas for the show, and Todd's like, "Don't do those because we yeah. we want to save those for Fallout Five." Yeah, interesting. Just, uh, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting to hear about. Yeah, that's that's it. Kind of makes me curious as to what those could be because, like, a TV show versus a video game, two different mediums. I'm interested to see what. Uh-huh. I wonder if we'll ever know once Fallout Five releases what those yeah, ideas. Yeah, you know, were. when we're all like, you know, in our sixties, you know? dude. Fallout yeah. Five is not going to release until like the mid twenty thirties, probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is so depressing to think about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I there's mean, a chance, there's a chance we might not live to see it. It's crazy to think about, you know. I mean, yeah, the, the world could <laughs> end literally tonight. <laughs> the world could end literally tonight. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let's go. Let's. Po- yeah, I wanted to end the show on a positive note. <laughs> Tuan had uh, different ideas. Tuan's so, like, fuck uh, you. Everything's gonna blow up. <laughs> but we, we might but, be in the actual Fallout, you know, rather than playing. Yeah. Games. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty wild to think about. That 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 it's crazy to think that that's not entirely insane to say. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, if, if it was ever like the words that like nuke for five, I'm just letting you know I'd go stand outside and I'm not going to risk any chance of surviving that. I want to go. Like, I'm <laughs> not going to live in that world. I am not. I refuse. And just go outside and just hey, man, take just, a nice, is, hey, man, take a nice immersive, swim in the pool. That, that is Fallout 5. That's just the immersive Fallout 5 experience right there. Yeah. Todd Howard, <laughs> I don't worry. I want to actually do is literally nuke the world. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he nukes the world. Okay, Fallout 5's out, guys. Oh, you know, Jesus. just go outside. <laughs> the ultimate simulator, real life. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Uh, yeah, the show looks great, though. No, memeing, aside, <laughs> memeing aside. Um, I'm excited for it. Um Todd's definitely mm-hmm. excited for it for his own game plans. But um yeah, I mean I'm more so still excited to seeing where Elder Scrolls goes with the Z and the Starfield DLC because Starfield has a lot of things that they have all in the about, pipe. All about the PS5 port. Let's go. Stop right, it. There is no <laughs> I don't give a fuck. They can have it if they want, but I don't think they're getting it. At least not this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I mean, this show looks sick. Walton Goggins is one of my favorite actors. They also got the dude who plays Ben Linus from Lost, who I haven't seen. Granted, I haven't been keeping up with like the latest in TV and everything, but I haven't seen him in in anything in a long time. So seeing him in something is is pretty awesome. Uh, this I think the show is going to be sick. I really think this show is yeah, going to be awesome. That looks pretty solid. And as far as video game adaptations go, I mean this this is probably the best trailer I've seen for that. I mean, even the Last of Us trailer, I don't remember it being super super amazing. Last of Us was a great show though, but oh my god, they also have the the chick who played the hooker from My Name Is Earl right there. Holy shit! Uh, that's funny. That's incredible. Uh, but yeah, this show looks awesome. Um, I can't wait for it. April 11th comes out on Amazon Prime. I will absolutely be watching it. And I think they announced that all the tra- all the sh- trailers, all the shows come out at the same time. So like every episode, you can binge watch, binge watch it, which is the oh. reason I didn't finish Ozark because I couldn't binge watch it. Yeah. Um, they should release this show on, net- on Game Pass. I think it'd be a good deal. I would imagine they'll have like a They'll probably have like a promotion, yeah. kind of like they did with Paramount for Amazon, or maybe not. Because if this is a really interesting thing, because don't Amazon and Microsoft hate each other? So <laughs> it's like that's actually pre- that's pretty interesting that they're making. But then again, that's been in production since yeah, probably before while, they so. owned. They probably officially yeah. Owned so them. it's interesting dynamic. Interesting dynamic. We'll see yeah. if there's any sort of deal in like a Game Pass perk for Amazon Prime. Yeah. Well, to uh, be fair, you said that like you said that Microsoft and Facebook had a pretty uh, bad relationship. It looks like Quest is gonna have Game Pass on there. It's because they need money. At the end of the day, 
people, they need to make money. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it, they need to yeah. kind of get the fuck over a certain thing. I understand well, not like that's absolutely the everything, side, you know. <laughs> but like they need to like kind of sometimes yeah. get over the the petty nonsense and then where it makes yeah. sense make money. Um where I mean if yeah, if, if Microsoft is releasing games on PS5 of all things, I feel like anything's possible at this point, you know. I feel like you're probably correct. Uh <laughs> but yeah, that's uh that is the last trailer or the last God damn, I don't know what I'm doing tonight. I don't know what I'm doing tonight. I'm like, I'm we watched I'm like a ton of trailers here. today. I'm like I mean, not dude, here. I'm for the last half hour, dude, I've been like stuttering and repeating things, and I'm just so tired. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Look too bad right now. It, wait, the game oh, I I can now see I spoke too soon. It's getting worse now. Oh my god. Uh, well, yeah, what is because it's probably because I have like a 50 fucking tabs open at this point. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let me close some of these. But yeah, I mean, that, that was the last topic for today. We can get up out of here. But before we do that, um, outros. Uh, anybody who wants to start, go ahead and go first. I will be going last. Uh, okay. You can find me uh, every Monday, because Monday's our new show times, at 8 it o'clock is. here. And I sometimes stream over on the Game Drain channel. Oh man, come on! The thing's dead, man. Just stop. It's not dead. <laughs> it's not Someone's got to try. <laughs> might as well be me. And well. Yeah. All right. Where about you, Tuan? Daniel, uh, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me here on the show on Mondays. Now you can also find me on Twitter. It's me, Tuan, or X, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, that's it right now. That's it. I'm not really on much else. What about you too? I, I mean, eventually, when when I'm ready, you know, when that when that's ready, I'll I'll reveal that again. I'm gonna keep bothering you. About gonna, I'm just gonna you reboot. Video. That, that needs to be a reboot. Just. What do you mean a reboot? <laughs> you need to have a, a boot to do a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> like, you need at least a boot. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking reboot. Nothing. <laughs> uh, but as for myself, uh, obviously you can find me here. Uh, Mondays for videos, and then Mondays also 8 p.m. for this show here with these guys. Uh, Wednesdays is the two player podcast with myself and Ham Solo. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern. And then Fridays is another video. You can find me here. You can find me on TSWS Gaming on Fridays as well at 4 p.m. Eastern for Bull Sentin and Twitter at Matt Lakes Games. And that is where you can find me. Uh, I think we can all get up out of here now, though. But uh, appreciate you all for stopping by, being active in the chat. It's very much appreciated. We will see you all next week. Peace. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.